Curious what workers' comp class codes are all about, how they're used, how to be sure your workers' comp policy is using the right codes and you're not being overcharged? In this video, I'm gonna do a deep dive on workers' compensation classification codes and explain what they are, how they're used, and how to be sure you're not being overcharged. I'm also gonna give you the biggest mistakes that business owners make when it comes to class codes, so stick around to the end for that. Hi, I'm Gordon Coyle. Welcome to my channel where I discuss all sorts of insurance and risk issues on the minds of business owners like you. So, workers' comp class codes. It should be fairly simple and straightforward, but it's not, and that can lead to confusion and costly mistakes. There are nearly 800 unique class codes in most states, which adds to this complexity. Fundamentally, let's start with answering the question, what is a workers' comp class code? A classification code is a four-digit identifier found in your state's workers' comp manual or the NCCI rating manual, also known as the Scopes Manual. It identifies the type of work predominantly done at the employer's location or where available the specific work performed by a group of employees. A simple example is that code 8810 is the class code assigned to clerical office employees and describes a company or group of employees that perform clerical duties. In each state, a rate is assigned to each class code, which is used in the premium development of that policy. So if your policy gets the class code wrong, you may be overcharged for your workers' comp insurance. Are class codes the same in all states? Not necessarily. The majority of codes are similar, but they do change from state to state based on each state's filings. The NCCI, or National Council of Compensation Insurers, standardizes the codes across 35 states. Of the remaining states, four are monopolistic, meaning that the state has total control over workers' comp, and 11 states each have their own rating bureaus that formulate class codes and rates. If you're an employer with employees in multiple states, the codes will be governed by the home state of those employees. Now, before I continue, can I ask you to like this video and subscribe to my channel? That goes a long way to helping my channel grow. Thanks. So how are class codes assigned? This is a great question that often comes up with startups. Generally speaking, when your workers' comp policy is first written as a new entity, the agent or broker writing your policy will do their best to assign the right class codes to the policy, and I'll go into that in a bit more detail in just a moment. Then, when your policy term ends, you'll have an audit to true up the payrolls, and here, the audit department of the insurance company may try and add, subtract, or reclassify certain employees. This is true when the agent first writing the policy didn't follow the rules or guidelines, or because the auditor's experience level they believe they have the right codes to be used. The question of how codes are assigned often comes up when changes are made and the employer isn't happy with the changes, typically because it resulted in additional premium. And that leads me to my next point. The business of the employer determines the class code and not necessarily the job tasks of the employees. This is where most agents and brokers get it wrong. We need to start with classifying the business operations first known as the governing classification. From there, separate job duties or classifications may, and I'd like to emphasize the word may, be added to the policy if permitted. Here's an example. Let's say you have a landscaping company. In New York, the class code for landscapers is 0042. This is your governing class. Now, some people may think, okay, let me split off and find separate codes for hedge trimming and lawn mowing and planting of flowers and shrubs. No, it doesn't work that way. All of the operations of the landscaper will fall into the governing class of 0042. Now, there are exceptions. The most common in this example would be clerical office workers. These employees are assigned code 8810 for clerical. There are other exceptions, such as larger contractors that perform excavation or clearing of land, as an example, which can be split off from their own code, but it does require some finesse to get this right, which I'm going to explain next. So, how do you divide up class codes and payrolls for an employer? There's no simple answer to that question, and this is where a skilled broker can step in and help unravel this sometimes confusing knot. Through the use of the state workers' comp rating boards, the NCCI, and experience, a good broker can help navigate through the issues of assigning codes and dividing up payrolls. 
And in my experience, once all that research is done, I usually run it by the insurance company underwriters and audit departments to double check my work so you're not caught by surprise down the road at audit time or by the NCCI or state bar boards who have final say on code changes. This may lead to the next question. How do I know if the class codes in my worker's comp policy are correct? Again, this is probably not something the typical business owner can figure out on their own and where a skilled broker can assist. This goes back to working with the right broker who has the skills, knowledge, and tools to do the right research for you and to determine if the codes in your policy are accurate. In fact, when we're working on a new workers' comp policy, we will typically audit the class codes and make sure they are accurate and look for potential ideas that might be better. In recent years, many states have adopted changes to the class codes, removing older codes like buggy whip manufacturer, I kid you not, and adding in more modern codes around technology and new operations and risks not contemplated in the past. How do you find workers' comp rates by class code in your state? This can also be a complex underwriting task for the average consumer. I get it. Sometimes you want to check out potential costs before making a bunch of calls so you're prepared, or you've made the calls, now you want to make sure you're getting a good deal. What makes this complex is that in many states, the rating structure is composed of two elements. The first is known as loss cost rates, which are also called base rates. In most states, the base rates or loss costs for each class code is published by the state and used by all insurers, but this is not the final rate. The second component of the rates are loss cost multipliers, which are known as LCMs. These are factors applied to the loss cost rates and each insurer has their own LCMs, and these are not always published. On top of that, big insurers may have five to 12 versions of the LCMs based on different underwriting tiers and criteria and their appetite, further complicating the goal of finding out what the rates are for each class code. In my opinion, the only way to get an accurate quote is to have a skilled broker submit your account to the right underwriters for a firm quote or ask them for a ballpark idea if that'll suffice. How do class codes impact the cost of workers' comp insurance? Well, as I mentioned previously, each class code in workers' compensation is assigned a rate. Whether that's a loss cost or final rate doesn't really matter. What matters is that if you get the class code wrong for some or all of your employees, you may be dramatically overpaying for workers' compensation. Here's the bottom line. If you're looking for a team of dedicated experts to work with on your business insurance, including workers' comp, I'd love to have an opportunity to speak with you and see if we're a good fit for you and your business. So as I mentioned at the beginning, what are the types of mistakes with class codes that often happen? In my experience, there are three big mistakes business owners make relative to class codes. The first is that a business owner decides to buy a workers' comp policy directly online without the help of a broker. They sort of know how the system works and they try and rig the system to get a lower rate or premium and they intentionally or accidentally misclassify the policy they're buying. Yeah, they get a lower premium, but that's only going to last until they get caught during an audit. And in cases like this, insurers can go back up to three years and charge the appropriate class rate and bill the insured in one chunk. And in some states, penalties can be assessed on top of that. Not a great situation. The second biggest mistake is thinking that subcontractors all have the right workers' comp insurance. And what I mean by that is a small subcontractor may have a workers' comp policy covering just his employees, his clerical employees, but excludes the owners, which is permissible in many states. The business owner, our client, let's say, submits the sub certificate at the audit and finds out that only the clerical class code is being deployed on the carpenter's policy and now is charged the full cost of the sub's work in the higher cost carpenter class rate, kind of blowing up that whole scenario. The third mistake I've seen pretty often is a business owner goes online to buy a policy and accepts the results of the online portal suggestion for class code, not knowing that other codes would work legitimately and cost less. This is where the complexity of the class code system can trip up someone. What's the solution to these mistakes and others? It's going to sound self-serving, but in my opinion, it makes sense to work with an expert broker, not only on your workers' comp, but with all your business policies. Why go it alone? In most cases, you're not going to save any money when you go it alone and buy insurance online and prone to making costly mistakes. Working with a skilled broker can help you avoid these costly mistakes and get the right coverage at the right price. 
you get peace of mind you're looking for, and you're avoiding problems down the road. Thanks for watching, and before you go, here are other videos that you may find interesting on workers' comp insurance. Thanks.